welcome back everybody to another video Michael is the name today I'm going to show you how to um, administer some care to your to your land grass this grass is called Zazia people just call it carpet grass all different type of name it is very soft it has very fine leaves it is very hardy hardy but in, in, in the sense that it can go very well in the tropics hot region like Jamaica and the Caribbean and some part in the states so this grass as I said it is very desirable because of the very unique characteristic of it it is fluffy soft hardy you don't have to water it a lot and I'm just going to show you how to apply some cultural practices now this is where this is where I plant a plug maybe a month and a half ago each one of these show them Johnny each one of these is a plug, right? And you can actually see where it is actually spreading already. So I'm going to show you because I know a lot of people plant this grass in this scheme and they're not getting any result. So I'm going to show you how this grass spread. No, this is where I said I planted it. Come right here to Johnny, come show them. You can actually see the grass right there already. The fact that it is here suggesting that it is spreading underground. And this grass spread by what we call stolons. See? That is an underground stem. So it's here, but it is running underground. And when it runs, then it emerges. It sends up apical or vertical shoots, and then it emerges. So, to ensure that this grass spread, what you have to do is to actually dig it up. Just agitate the soil around it. And this will encourage these soft little stolons to run, and the grass will spread. So if you plant a plug here and right here so it's hard, then it's not going to spread that rapidly. Alright? So what you want to do is to go right around it and just dig up the soil, just agitate it. And this can be done maybe once a week. Just do this once a week. And you will ensure that your grass will spread in a timely fashion. Alright? Also, I must point out that this grass, it doesn't like shade. It like full sun. So if you plant this grass under trees, don't expect that you're going to get good results. This grass, unlike maybe Bermuda, this grass loves full sun. If you plant it under shade, it's going to get very bushy and tall. If you plant it full sun, it will grow very low and tight. And that's what you want. You can actually see it right here, show them Johnny. Right here. It's actually spreading, spreading from here all the way down here already. So guys, that's it. Remember, if you have the Zazia grass and you plant it in plug, if you plant it, for example, if you plant it in, in, in sod, meaning that you get it like a carpet and you roll it out, then fine. But once you plant it as a plug, you have to go around it and agitate it to ensure that the stolen, the underground stolen, because this grass, as I said, it doesn't spread from above, it spread from below. So you have to go and just agitate the soil, just dig up the soil around it, maybe once a week to ensure that you have good penetration of the underground stolons. Alright, for fertilization, for fertilizer application rather, you can apply 20-20-20, mix it like one teaspoon per gallon and apply it. Foliar application, using the foliar application and the foliar method. Right? You can also add granular fertilizer, but you have to be careful. Right? When you had the granular fertilizer, you have to ensure that you flood it with water so that you don't have burn. Alright, so the best way is to use the 20-20-20 and you can fertilize once a month. Alright. Go over your journey. Alright, so this is just a little pineapple that I planted. And this is a hot pepper plant. Now, also, if you notice that this pepper, the leaves are on the ground, this is not desirable. You must always ensure that no leaves of your plant is touching the ground because the ground is where you have a lot of pathogen and pathogen are anything microbes that can cause disease whether it is bacterial fungal or viral now in the soil you have a lot of fungal organism or fungal spores that live in the soil right and when your water for example and the, the, the soil splash up on the leaves it can actually the spore can actually come in contact with the leaf and cause disease fungal disease now, having lined, have them lined down on the soil is also another avenue for fungal 
um, um, transfer from the soil onto your plant. So what you want to do is to lift the skirt. Now this is called the skirting of the plant. So you lift it. Meaning that you, re you, re you remove these lower leaves. Right? So if you have a sharp tool, just go ahead and remove them. This method is called lifting the skirt. And of course you can see, have white fly here and we have a little bit of fungus, fungal disease going on here. See it? We have white fly. So this plant is ready to be treated. It's just that I don't use any chemical in my garden, so I'm going to use the soap water mixture to treat these. Right? So this is what this is what you want now. Now this is not only desirable for the fact that it reduces the transmission of, of, of disease from the soil to the to the plant. It also allows ear to better circulate around the plant. Right? So you can have better gaseous exchange. Them the mint. All right, this is the mint, and of course you can see some signs of maybe this is nutrient deficiency, and you can also see leaf miner disease or insect rather leaf miner. It's a little worm that mine out the leaves. So I'm just going to remove these, and this plant will rejuvenate. It will regenerate over time by sending up new leaves. So it's always important for you to go in your garden and scout, especially if you are going doing organic and you don't want to use chemicals, any toxic chemicals, you can scout and just manually remove the disease part of the plant. I'm also going to mulch this. And as I said, what I'm doing here is breaking up the soil aggregates so that you can have gaseous exchange taking place because in the soil environment they have the roots and the roots have to breathe or respire now to get atmospheric oxygen into the soil you have to break it up so that oxygen can diffuse into the soil particle or the soil environment the plant roots can get that oxygen in a process called respiration produces energy so that it can grow but in turn the plant is also going to release a carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide have to come out of the soil environment because they don't want a build up of carbon dioxide in the soil environment. So that is what we talk about. Gaseous exchange. Taking in oxygen, giving off um, um, carbon dioxide. Just like how you breathe. Right? So you have to do that. So remember your plant must, must, don't only need light and water but it also needs oxygen. So, right? so molding is a very important part of the production. All right? So all of those persons with garden and you have the soil. You have the soil like this, compact, especially after a shower or rain. It is advisable that you go in and just use a tool, a machete, or a spade or anything, and just break up the soil. Because now that you get the rainfall, you're also going to need oxygen. Right? So it is advisable to do this. And you can do this once a week, depending on where you, you are or your soil, your soil type. Or you can just be every fortnightly or monthly, depends. Alright. Come, Johnny. Put on this. Alright, so this is rosemary, and I'm going to propagate it by just cutting it and sticking it in the ground. Right, it will catch. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this video helped you to become a better gardener, a better farmer. If you like it, please share it with your friends and your family. And subscribe. Remember to subscribe and comment. Any question that you have, put in the comment section. For home and garden fix and tricks. I'm nice. I'm over.